welcome back to the Airbus A320 simulator. Today we will continue comparing the Airbus A320 and the Boeing 737 Classic. Now, one of the YouTube viewers who watched our videos uh, asked us to do a comparison on engine failure at V1, which is the decision speed, the takeoff decision speed. And today we will do exactly that. So, we'll start on the Airbus and next time it is the Boeing. Now the aircraft is prepared for the takeoff. All the necessary checklists are complete. And I would like you to know that the static air temperature, the outside air temperature is 45 degrees Celsius and our gross weight is 75 tons, which is 3 tons below the maximum takeoff weight. So, I will release the parking brake advance the thrust levers, stabilize the engines and take off. Airspeed building, thrust is set. Eight knots. Engine failure, continue and rotate. I can barely kick the aircraft flying and I have to advance. I have to use immense force on the left rudder. Oh, and it's a positive rate, gear up. Trying to keep the aircraft level. I will use some rudder trim to help me. Okay, now we are at above 400 feet. I will pull the heading selector and engage autopilot number one. Now what I have to do is do the ECAM checklist. Engine mode selector goes to ignition. Thrust lever 2 idle. And we will try to relight the engines. Now we are climbing at a slow rate of 500 feet per minute to our acceleration altitude which is in fact 1860 feet. I can release the speed brakes and the lights. Our working engine is now running 2 minutes and 35 seconds on its maximum power, on its takeoff power, and we can only use it for 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, we can see that we have an additional failure on hydraulics. We can cancel that for now. And there is no relight, so I will select the engine master 2 to off. Now I have an additional item, which is fuel crossfeed on. Fuel crossfeed is going to on. There is no damage, so we don't need to do anything else. And we have engine 2 start valve fault. Now I can start clearing all these messages. It is actually asking us to try to start again with the cross bleed on, so I will try to do that. Okay, we are reaching the acceleration altitude. I will stop our climb so that we can clean our configuration. That means the flaps. Okay, the speed is checked. It is safe to retract the flaps to position 1. Flaps 1 and green light. And I will now select the maximum continuous thrust because we are nearing our 5 minute limit. Maximum continuous thrust is set. 
and it is now safe to retract the flaps to up. Flaps are going up. You can see that the engine thrust from number one engine is barely keeping the aircraft level and we are actually asking it to climb so this is a, a pretty hard task for the aircraft may I say. Okay on the ECAM we can see that the starter time has been exceeded the start was failed and I'm putting the engine master 2 to off. Engine to shut down. And I'll try to turn left to heading 070 to come back for ILS runway 25 right at Frankfurt International. I'll now continue the ECAM actions and actually I will check all the statuses. I will clear engine 2 shutdown. I have air bleed, but that is normal because we have no air coming in from the number 2 engine. I'm clearing that and I come to the electrics which also shows that the generator 2 is inoperative. So to have a second generator I will start the auxiliary power unit, the jet engine in the back of the aircraft. I will activate the approach phase on the FMGS so that it maintains the green dot speed, the clean configuration airspeed. And at that speed we can continue open climb to 3500 feet which is the safe altitude to climb out of Frankfurt. I can clear the electrics. And we can see that we have engine 2 bleed in operative, main galley in operative, and generator 2. Actually the APU has been started so the main galley is clear. And we have loads of electricity as much as we need. I cleared that and no status messages displayed. We are still climbing to 3500 feet at a healthy rate of 400 feet per minute. We will probably reach that altitude uh, nearing the Frankfurt airport so actually just after reaching it we'll start our descent for the localizer runway 25 right. Okay, now we will set the flight management guidance computer uh, for our approach into Frankfurt. I will clear the engine out. I will put in the QNH, the pressure with this, which is 1013. There is no wind, uh, so I can leave that empty. The temperature is 45. The decision height for the LS is 200 feet. And we will land with configuration 3. This means that we will land with flaps 3. And we can see that our approach speed is 155 knots, which is quite high. The last thing I have to do for this is enable landing flap 3 mode on the GPWS, the ground proximity warning system. Okay, now we have reached our altitude of 3500 feet and actually you can see that the airport is on our left so we will start to descend to 2500 feet for our approach. I'll select vertical speed at minus 700 feet. Okay, now to start configuring the aircraft to set the flaps 1, I will reduce the speed to a safer zone. And now the speed is checked, we can set the flaps to 1. I will further reduce the speed to 190 knots. 
and gauge ILS is on both sides to see whether I am too high or too low. I'll put the navigation display into roast mode so that I can have a full 360 degree view of our map around us. I will turn the aircraft to the left a bit to a heading of 060 and as we can see on the primary flight display we are already below the glide path so I will set the flaps to 2 the speed is checked further reduce the speed to 175 knots and I will start turning left to a heading of 280 for the ILS runway 25 right. We have something else on the status page and it is the yellow engine 2 pump. That is also normal because, well, we don't have the engine 2, so I will just clear it. And now, as we are establishing on the heading of 280, I will arm the approach mode so that the aircraft catches the localizer and the glide path when we are establishing it. I'll further reduce the speed to our approach speed of 155. Oh, that was just a random call. I can select flaps to 3 and put the gear down. And now the aircraft is catching both the localizer and the glide slope. If you've seen our Autoland video, you probably know that the localizer is the horizontal component of the instrument landing system which guides the aircraft to the runway and the glide path is the vertical component. Now we have passed 2000 feet above the ground. Landing gear is down with three green lights. I'll set the approach lighting and we are stable on the approach. Next thing I'll do, I'll arm the ground spotters and we have ECAM status of landing no blue. So that means that the aircraft is fully prepared for the landing. We are now at 1350 feet above the ground and I will disconnect the autopilot and land the aircraft manually. Autopilot disconnected. The Airbus aircraft uh, leaves the rudder trim in a good position, so I don't need to make any big corrections with the pedals for now. However, right before the landing I will have to press the reset switch which makes the rudder trim back to zero degrees and then I will have to make big corrections with the feet to keep the aircraft stable and straight we are at 600 feet and stable Five hundred feet. I'm going flight directors off and bird the flight path angle. Four hundred. Hundred above. Minimum. Our decision is to land. I'll prepare my finger on the reset switch. One hundred. Reset. 40, 30, 20, retard, retard, five. 
all wheels on the ground, idle reverse and I will start braking with my feet. One hundred knots. Eighty knots. Sixty. Fifty. Reverse is out and forty knots. Okay, not too much left until the end of the runway, but as perfectly normal because I didn't use a lot of braking. And I wanted to vacate it on the end. So, the aircraft has stopped. We are on the ground safely, even though the temperature is very high and our weight is also pretty high, which made it pretty hard for the aircraft. But actually flying itself was piece of cake. Now let's try the same on the Boeing. <laughs> 